Anemia. Ever feel like you're running on 5% battery by 10 a.m., dragging yourself through the day like a zombie who skipped breakfast? Well, say hello to iron deficiency anemia, the most common blood disorder and the ultimate energy thief. Your red blood cells are supposed to carry oxygen, like little ubers for your body's tissues. But without enough iron, your body can't produce enough hemoglobin, which means those ubers show up late. Or not at all. The result? You're pale, exhausted. Short of breath after climbing one flight of stairs and weirdly craving ice cubes? Yeah, that's a real symptom. It's called pica. It sneaks in quietly, maybe after blood loss, pregnancy, or just eating like a toddler who hates vegetables. And your body. It's like, hey, I'm trying my best here, but you gave me zero tools to work with. Left untreated, it can snowball, affecting your heart, your focus, your ability to not pass out in a warm room. But here's the twist. It's totally fixable. Eat iron-rich foods like spinach, red meat, beans. Take supplements if needed. And for the love of all that's oxygenated, pair that iron with vitamin C. Because iron's shy and it needs a buddy to get absorbed. Iron deficiency anemia is your body's version of low power mode. Don't ignore it. Recharge. Thalassemia. Imagine your body has a factory that builds red blood cells. Now imagine that factory is using a blueprint with a few typos. That's thalassemia. It's an inherited blood disorder, meaning you're basically born with this oops in your DNA. And the result? Your body makes abnormal hemoglobin, that key protein red blood cells use to carry oxygen. So those red blood cells? Yeah, they're kind of floppy, fragile, and get destroyed way too fast, like buying a dozen eggs and realizing nine are already cracked. Depending on the type, alpha or beta, minor or major, symptoms range from I'm just a little tired to I need regular blood transfusions to survive. People with mild thalassemia might not even know they have it, but severe thalassemia, like beta thalassemia major, also called Cooley's anemia, can lead to life-threatening anemia, bone deformities, delayed growth, and an overworked spleen that's basically screaming into the void. And guess what? This disorder loves to travel, it's most common in people from Mediterranean, South Asian, Middle Eastern, and African backgrounds. There's no magic cure, but treatments like regular transfusions, iron collation therapy to get rid of extra iron, and even bone marrow transplants can make a huge difference. Thalassemia is a genetic plot twist, but with good care and some solid science, it doesn't have to steal the spotlight. Sickle cell disease. Your red blood cells are supposed to be soft, round, and flexible like tiny delivery vans cruising smoothly through your bloodstream, dropping off oxygen like Amazon Prime on steroids. But in sickle cell disease, those vans turn into sharp, stiff crescent moons. And let's just say, they do not deliver on time. This is a genetic disorder passed down from your parents where your hemoglobin is defective. Instead of round cells gliding through blood vessels, these sickle-shaped cells get stuck pile up like traffic in LA, and block blood flow. What happens next? Pain, swelling, organ damage, stroke. Even bones and lungs don't escape. And when a crisis hits, it hits hard. We're talking hospital visits, oxygen masks, and morphine level pain. Sickle cells also die off quickly, which means your body constantly runs low on red blood cells, AKA chronic anemia. So now you're not only hurting, you're also exhausted all the time. This disease hits especially hard in people of African, Mediterranean, Middle Eastern, and Indian descent. And while it can't be cured easily, early diagnosis, meds like hydroxyurea, pain management, and even bone marrow transplants can make a massive difference. Sickle cell disease isn't just a blood disorder, it's a lifelong battle. But science is fighting back, and every breakthrough that's one step closer to turning those sickle-shaped saboteurs back into smooth, round heroes. Leukemia. You know how your white blood cells are supposed to be your body's elite security team? Like microscopic bouncers. Strong, smart, always ready to kick out germs. Well, leukemia is what happens when those bouncers forget their job and start throwing wild parties inside the club. Leukemia is a blood cancer that starts in the bone marrow, your body's blood cell factory. But instead of calmly producing balanced amounts of red cells, white cells, and platelets, your bone marrow goes full chaos mode. More white cells, it screams. Wait, 
the broken ones, flood the system, and suddenly your bloodstream is filled with lazy, immature white blood cells that don't fight anything. They just loiter, like mall cops with no training, just standing around messing things up. There are four major types of leukemia, and yes, they sound like robot names. All, the childhood crasher, AML, hits fast, punches hard, CLL, shows up late in life and overstays its welcome. CML comes with its own genetic glitch, the Philadelphia chromosome. Sounds fancy, but trust me, it's not a good souvenir. Symptoms. Think. Why am I always tired? Why am I bruising like a banana? Why do I catch colds like a toddler in daycare? Treatment is no joke. Chemo, radiation, bone marrow transplants, and some super cool targeted drugs that go full James Bond on those bad cells. Leukemia might try to turn your blood into a backstage mosh pit, but with the right game plan and a medical dream team, you can take back the stage. Lymphoma. Your lymphatic system is like the body's secret subway, a network of vessels and stations quietly moving immune cells around and draining the weird stuff nobody wants. It doesn't ask for attention, it just handles business. But then along comes lymphoma, the uninvited graffiti artist of the immune system. It doesn't just ride the train, it hijacks it. Lymphoma is a cancer of the lymphatic system where certain white blood cells, usually lymphocytes, go rogue. Instead of protecting you, they start multiplying like rabbits on espresso and refuse to die like they're supposed to. The two main types, Hodgkin lymphoma, rare, more predictable, and includes a celebrity troublemaker called the Reed Sternberg cell. If you see that cell under a microscope, boom, it's Hodgkin's. Non-Hodgkin lymphoma, the wilder cousin, more common, comes in dozens of flavors, some chill, some aggressive, all complicated. What does it feel like? Swollen lymph nodes, maybe in your neck or armpits. Tiredness, night sweats, weight loss you didn't ask for. It's the kind of stuff you'd write off as stress until your doctor's like, let's run some tests. Treatment, from chemo and radiation to immunotherapy and targeted drugs, it's all hands on deck, and many people kick lymphoma's butt, especially with early detection. Lymphoma crashes the immune system's party, but with the right plan, you can kick it out before it finishes the snacks. Neutropenia, meet neutrophils, your body's first responders. They're like the firefighters, paramedics, and mall security of your immune system, rushing in when anything sketchy shows up. But with neutropenia, those responders don't show up, or there's like two of them and one's on lunch break. Neutropenia means your body has too few neutrophils, the most common type of white blood cell. And when they're missing, your body becomes a free-for-all for bacteria, viruses, and every germ with an attitude. You might not feel sick at first, but then a paper cut turns into a war zone. A mild cold becomes a personal vendetta. Even brushing your teeth can suddenly feel like a health risk. It's usually a side effect, not a standalone villain often caused by chemotherapy, autoimmune disorders, bone marrow problems, or some medications that forgot to read the room. And get this, people with severe neutropenia are told to avoid fresh flowers, raw sushi, crowded places, and even hugging folks with the sniffles. Yep, your immune system turns into a bubble-wrapped toddler. But here's the good part. GCSF injections, aka the cell cheerleaders, can boost production. And with precautions, infections can be prevented, meaning fewer ER visits and more peace of mind. Neutropenia doesn't mean your immune system's gone, just that it's taking a nap. And you need to watch the door while it rests. Leukocytosis. White blood cells are like your body's bouncers, standing at every door, scanning the crowd for sketchy germs trying to sneak in. But in leukocytosis, it's like your immune system hired too many bouncers, Suddenly, the club's wall-to-wall -wall with security, and no one can move. Leukocytosis means your white blood cell count is too high. And while that sounds like your body's just being extra prepared, it's actually a red flag waving behind the scenes. Because your immune system only calls in the cavalry when something's up, like infections, inflammation, allergic reactions, stress, or sometimes more serious stuff like leukemia. Basically, it's not the disease. It's the yo, something's wrong, alarm. And here's the twist. You probably won't feel the white cells piling up. You might just feel the reason behind it. Fever, pain, fatigue, or that overall, I feel like microwaved garbage vibe. 
Doctors usually catch it during routine blood work, and then it's detective time. Is it an infection, a drug side effect, stress, or your bone marrow acting like it's stuck in overdrive? Treatment? That depends on the cause. If it's just a passing infection, your body will chill out. But if it's something deeper, that's when targeted meds or further testing come in. Leukocytosis isn't the enemy. It's the blinking check engine light. Don't ignore it. Pop the hood and find out what's really going on. Hemophilia. Imagine this. You get a paper cut. Most people slap on a Band-Aid, maybe a dramatic sigh, and move on. But if you've got hemophilia, that paper cut becomes a full-blown event. Hemophilia is a genetic bleeding disorder where your blood is basically like clot? Never heard of her. It happens because you're missing certain clotting factors, proteins in your blood that act like the emergency repair crew when bleeding starts. Without them, blood just keeps bleeding, not faster, but longer, like the faucet that never quite shuts off. There are two main types, hemophilia A, missing factor 8, hemophilia B, missing factor 9, also known as Christmas disease, which is not nearly as festive as it sounds. And no, it's not just about cuts. Internal bleeding can happen too, in joints, muscles, even the brain, just from a bump or twist. So yeah, a stubbed toe or a rough hug, that's risky business. It mostly affects males since the gene lives on the X chromosome, thanks biology. Women are usually carriers, but they can experience mild symptoms too. There's no cure, yet. But treatments have leveled up big time. Regular infusions of clotting factor, preventive therapies, and even gene therapy on the horizon. Hemophilia doesn't mean you're fragile. It just means your blood needs a little backup squad. So if you've got it, know your body, know the signs, and keep that emergency plan tight. Thrombocytopenia. So picture your blood as a construction crew. You've got red cells delivering supplies, white cells keeping out the riffraff. And then there are platelets your emergency repair team. They're the ones yelling, we got a leak on lane four, and rushing in to slap on a clot before you bleed all over the place. But in thrombocytopenia, that team, tiny, understaffed, possibly on strike, this is what happens when your body doesn't have enough platelets. And that means bruises, bleeding, and random red dots on your skin that look like you lost a fight with a pepper shaker. You might wake up looking like you got tackled by a herd of invisible elbows, bleeding gums, nosebleeds out of nowhere. Yeah, your blood's trying to patch the hole, but it's like handing out post-it notes in a hurricane. And don't even get me started on petechiae, those tiny red dots that sound like an Italian appetizer, but are really your capillaries having a meltdown. Causes. Oh, take your pick. Autoimmune drama. Your body attacks its own platelets viral infections, cancer treatments, medications, or just your spleen being a hoarder and stealing all the platelets for itself. Treatment depends on the cause, but might include steroids, immunoglobulins, or platelet transfusions, basically whatever it takes to get the repair crew back on the clock. Thrombocytopenia isn't the end of the world. It's just your blood sending an RSVP like, hey, we're gonna need a little help, and maybe a helmet. Thrombocytosis. Platelets are the little construction workers in your blood. They rush to the scene, patch up damage, and clock out. But in thrombocytosis, your body decides, let's hire 10,000 more of them, just in case. Now you've got too many platelets, and they're swarming your bloodstream like overachievers fixing imaginary problems. Paper cut, boom, 400 platelets show up with scaffolding. Stubbed toe, they repave the entire street and add speed bumps. This platelet surplus turns your blood into Clot City, and while that sounds like a superhero HQ, it's not. Clots in the wrong place equals stroke, heart attack, DVT, or a real bad time. There are two types, primary thrombocytosis, bone marrow just lost the plot, secondary, a reaction to something else, like infection, inflammation, or even surgery. Sometimes there are no symptoms. Other times it's headaches, dizziness, numb fingers, or that creepy, something feels off, feeling you can't shake. Treatment? Depends. Some people just get monitored. Others need aspirin, blood thinners, or meds to tone down the platelet party. Thrombocytosis is your body yelling better safe than sorry. But if nobody calls security, your blood starts laying down clots like it's prepping for winter. Overachievers are great until they clog the system. Polycythemia vera.
Your bone marrow has one job, make just enough red blood cells to keep things flowing smoothly. But in polycythemia, Vera, it goes full overachiever, like that one coworker who triple checks the group project and color codes the coffee cups. Except instead of being helpful, it makes your blood thick, like pancake syrup thick. You think, cool, more red blood cells, I'll be a superhero. Nope. What you actually get is headaches, dizziness, and itching after hot showers that'll make you question every life decision. And your face, redder than a lobster in a tanning bed. Why? Because thick blood equals sluggish flow equals more pressure. Plus, it's way more likely to clot, which could lead to a heart attack, stroke, or a surprise hospital visit you did not RSVP for. PV is a rare blood cancer, but it's a sneaky one. Most people only find out from routine blood work that basically says, hey buddy, we've got a red cell situation. Treatment, phlebotomy. A blood drain. Yeah, for real. Aspirin to keep things slick. And meds to tell your marrow, take a breath, you're doing too much. Polycythemia, Vera. When your blood goes from MVP to try hard, it's manageable, but only if you catch it before it clots up your plans. Multiple myeloma. One rogue plasma cell, that's all it takes. Not a villain with a cape, just a white blood cell that suddenly decides, you know what, I'm done following the rules. And boom, welcome to multiple myeloma, a sneaky bone-crushing, kidney-bothering cancer that turns your bone marrow into an overcrowded frat house of malfunctioning immune cells. These plasma cells don't fight infections anymore. They start multiplying like they're in a pyramid scheme and every new cell's got a cousin who wants in. Before you know it, your healthy blood cells get evicted, your bones feel like dry spaghetti, and your kidneys are quietly panicking from all the protein waste these freeloaders leave behind. The symptoms, bone pain, fatigue that makes getting off the couch feel heroic, repeated infections, and blood test numbers that make doctors go, huh, no loud warning signs, just a slow, silent takeover. Treatment isn't a one and done. We're talking chemotherapy, targeted therapy, immunotherapy, and sometimes a full stem cell transplant, hitting the system's reset button. Multiple myeloma doesn't come crashing in. It sneaks through the back door and trashes the place. But catch it early and you can show it the exit, fast. Deep vein thrombosis, DVT. Ever sat on a long flight, binge watched five episodes straight and forgot you even had legs? Yeah. Your blood remembers. Deep vein thrombosis, or DVT, is what happens when a blood clot forms in one of your deep veins, usually in the legs, and decides to just stay there. Your body's clotting system is supposed to be smart. Cut your finger, clot it up, bleeding stops. But in DVT, your blood goes, hmm, sitting still? Let's build a clot just in case. Spoiler, bad idea. Symptoms, swelling in one leg pain or cramping that won't quit, warmth and redness like your calves suddenly angry. And here's the real kicker, that clot can break loose, ride the bloodstream like a hitchhiker and land in your lungs, a condition called a pulmonary embolism. Translation, you go from my leg feels weird to I can't breathe real fast. Causes include surgery, injury, long periods of sitting, or just bad genetic luck. Birth control and smoking can also up your risk. Treatment. Blood thinners to stop the clot from growing, compression stockings to keep circulation flowing, and sometimes surgery if things get dicey. DVT doesn't need drama to do damage. Move your legs, know the signs, and don't ignore the little aches. They might be planning something big.